Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here, so I thought I'd show you again what I eat for my one meal a day as a vegan, which some people also call a plant-based diet. And I've actually come to a place called Big Mountain. It actually sells meat as well, but it's got vegan options. They have really good reviews online. It's the first place I've been that sells meat in a very long time. And I've just met my lovely new friend Daniel here. What's going that's on? That's really healthy as well. And what's your background in, was you telling me? Like, because you do calisthenics now, but what were yeah. you doing before? I used to lift a lot of weights. I got into bodybuilding. And from bodybuilding, I got into powerlifting, like benching, squatting, and deadlifting. I eventually got sick of, of the movements, really, and bought a pair of Olympic rings and kind of fell in love. And so, yeah, I've just no. learned how to use my body yes. instead of... Um, external weights and bars and things yeah yeah cool man so, yeah so yeah we're gonna go on in there and we'll chat to you a bit more in a short while yeah. we're first going to eat some fruit beforehand and yeah what are you eating first i'm just gonna have some oranges yeah yeah nice i've got some namdok mais here they're the most sort of highly prized mangoes in thailand and yeah just a brilliant way to wake up the digestive system to actually get ready for some heavy food. And we just ordered, what was it, vegan pizza? We got pizza and burgers. Yeah. And hummus. And a garlic baguette as well. And then they've apparently got desserts as well and stuff like that. So yeah, looking forward to that. So yeah, how long have you been into one meal a day for? Almost two years now. Oh wow. Yeah. Nice. And how, and how old are you? Um, 20. Nice, that's a good age to get into it. Right? Yeah. Um, I found Dr. Noon Amin Ra. Yeah. Yeah, sometime, almost two years ago. And researched his work for about three days and then was like, what have I got to lose? You know, why am I not doing this? Um, some of the stuff he was showing about how um, glycation, the process of glycation ages you and how the process of autophagy is like the opposite of that and, and, and could and you explain to people what both these things are because yeah, a lot of people won't know right um glycation is essentially when you when you put sugar into your body or you put fuel into your body it only has so many places to go um, it, ideally you want it in your bloodstream as energy um, after that it can it can store it in your in your liver and your skeletal muscle um, but eventually it runs out of storage and it has to put it somewhere so it ends up putting it on your proteins in your body and that is just bad all around it's, it's just not good for you because your body is essentially made up of proteins the, you know the, the solid component of your body is made up of protein if you're putting sugar all over it it's just kind of a bad deal so this this ages the body it's one of the main uh, reasons that we age as humans um, and so if you can inhibit that process as much as possible, um, you're not gonna age as much. Yeah. And, and the, really the only reason that happens is because we eat a meal and all of our glycogen stores are full and then we eat another meal. And another one and another one. And then another, right, <laughs> right. And so if you can just eat one time, it inhibits that process ultimately um, to the greatest extent um, sustainably possible. Because I mean, we have to eat you know eventually yeah so and then there's the opposite of that process pretty much which is autophagy um, auto meaning self and phagy meaning to eat so it's essentially your body eating yourself yeah so i call it self cannibalism right in the body <laughs> right um so the body uses sugar first for energy and then it goes to fat and then it goes to proteins and that's essentially your body eating itself but the body knows when it eats itself, it has to replenish itself or else you're just going to die. Um, so you're, you're eating yourself and then replenishing yourself. You're anti-aging. And so with this knowledge of these two processes, it becomes pretty apparent that it's very smart to only eat one time a day. If you, if you want to live you know, a, a long life and not only a long life, but a, a happy life. Yeah, and a healthy one where right. you function the best mentally and physically. And this right. Thing, like, yeah, it's free of sickness and disease. <laughs> it's, it just makes sense, really. Man, the fruit is good. <laughs> it's the best. Breaking the fast with fruit.
So you've been eating one meal a day for how long now? Just over two months now. Nice. Um, before that I did like around anywhere from 16 to 20 hours a day, like water fasting uh -huh. for over a year. Um, and then I started learning about Ori Hofmeckler. I don't know if you've heard of Ori Hofmeckler. No. He promotes the warrior diet, which is a type of one meal a day. And I've learned about him first, then I found out about Dr. Amun Ra. It sounded really, really appealing to me. I actually tried to do it a long time ago and I just couldn't get it to work. I was doing, doing some things wrong. And then, just over two months ago, I ended up travelling to Phuket and I had to fast for over 24 hours. I couldn't get access to food while I was travelling. And then I went to an all-you-could-eat vegan buffet, ate so much food, and then I found I didn't want breakfast or lunch the next day. Right. So I found by eating a lot more calories in one sitting, I just started naturally going in that direction. And right. yeah, I just continued to go in that direction. And I found the difference between daily intermittent fasting with two meals a day to one, like a significant difference. Because I would normally break my fast before training and eat because I was concerned that I couldn't train in a fasting state. Because <laughs> yeah. the really intense calisthenics. But then, I'd eat that and my energy levels wouldn't go up, they'd actually go down. Right. So it wasn't actually giving me the energy that I found that I was looking to gain from it. And then I found, once I got into one meal a day, I was like, well, I'm not going to eat my one meal and then go and train afterwards. So I was like, I'm gonna have to train in a fasting state. So I forced myself to do it, push through my mind's limitations and its fears, and I found that I could train harder, longer, I could recover quicker, my stamina went up, my endurance, like, it was just win-win. And then my body fat percentage started to go down, I started to get more muscle mass increasing, because obviously the longer you fast, the more human growth hormone production right. you'll get, testosterone reduction, insulin goes low, right. improves insulin sensitivity, which you know, a lot of bodybuilders out there take insulin, <laughs> right. steroids, testosterone, and human growth hormone injection. This is a better natural alternative that has no side effects, only positive effects, so yeah. It just, I went naturally in this direction rather than trying to force it and it's just amazing and I find that it just maximizes my productivity, like massively. Dude, it's, it's ridiculous. Because like, you, ha you have to consume something. Yeah. And so you, you can like really sit down and, and just zone in on, on anything you want to really. Yeah. And just get it done. Yeah, that's it. Not focusing upon food all day long. It's just so much more convenient for a busy lifestyle, and I have a very busy lifestyle. And I also find when I'm traveling as well, it's so much more convenient. Yeah, dude, you, don't, <laughs> you don't have to think about what am I going to eat, when am I going to eat, how am I going to uh, pay for you, like, it's, um, yeah, it's really amazing. Yeah, it's like I used to eat a raw vegan diet for almost two years, and I was eating all day long, and it was like when I traveled, I had to carry all this fruit with me, so it was more additional weight, and then if I run out of fruit, I panic. And I just got in situations where, yeah, I was just concerned about not having food and stuff. So yeah, it's just given me a lot more freedom in life, which is nice. Those mangoes are definitely a good way to break. So there's a chapati in hummus, it's got oil on, so we pour that off. Then we've got some burgers. Yeah, man. Uh, well, they're very hot. Cucumber, lettuce, tomato, like on the inside. And yeah, that's very, very hot, so I'm gonna wait for that one for a minute. Yeah, it's looking pretty damn good for me. I think we can do a little oil for it. Yeah. Let's take that off so it don't go on there. Loop, 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 loop. <laughs> or mm, I think it might be mm. Mm. that's a very flavorful yeah that's pretty good Chapati could be a bit um, soft though, it's quite hard this one compared to the majority of chapatis I've had. It's actually one of the biggest ones I've had, so yeah, that's why 
It's like that. Yeah, I wonder what made the hummus from. It's just like the standard hummus. Chickpea. I'm thinking chickpea, but not just chickpea. There's something, There's else. something else in there for sure. <laughs> I can't work out what that. It's a mystery. Mystery mug thing. <laughs> and I saw you posted a video. Where it was like a, you know, what you do in a day on average, mm -hmm. and how you went on a run, like when was first thing in the morning. Yeah, yeah. That's like key one meal a day. Someone taught me that recently. We followed Doctor Ivan Ra's work. Uh huh. Like, yeah. Get you into that deeper fast state, like quick up. Right. right. And I'm loving it because since I got into calisthenics, I haven't been doing running and I used to be a runner. Mm -hmm. So I'm loving it, especially running on the beach. Right. Like grounding myself at the same time, like yeah. yeah it just feels really, really good. I did a swim this morning. Um, yeah. It's so good to burn through yeah. all that Bucket sugar guys. you had from last night. Mm. And, um, You can get way deep on the fast, way quicker doing mm. that. Yeah, exactly that. It's a brilliant way to start the day as well. I normally Perfect. just get straight on the laptop and work, yeah. but now I force myself to get out and do that, and I just feel way better. Right now. That was good. And something I learned from Arnold Schwarzenegger, running on the beach actually lengthens your hamstrings rather than running on the road. Which, yeah, I need to be doing that because I've always had really shortened hamstrings from doing a lot of cycling and running. So, win win. Can try some of this? Yeah. yeah this is some vegan garlic baguette thing. Mm, definitely very garlicky. Good because I love that. Do you know Vegetable Police? Mm -hmm. mm, he should be moving here very soon. I, ca I commented on his video today and told him to come. He keeps asking me where should I move to and I said come here. For sure. He'd love it here. Oh yeah he would. Yeah I'll do training with him and stuff like that. Make videos together like definitely right. collaborate and stuff like that. But yeah. yeah. I love Casey man. I've been wanting to meet him for a long time. Mm. Yeah, so that'd be sweet. Yeah, I'll miss him later and see what he's doing about that. And you know the deal, man. You spent time in Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. You probably went through the same thing yep. he's going through. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, I think he said he was going to move around the end of the month, but I'll, I'll find out. Look at those. And they're black bases as well, not burnt. They're actually black colours. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious. I wonder what's going on there. It might be charcoal. They do that with a lot of things. You get like charcoal ice cream. And, hmm. I remember seeing in Man Mall, which is a big shopping mall in Chiang Mai, this vendor that sells like ice cream that had a charcoal ice cream and it says like healthy ice cream will detox your body and it's like with dairy and like, looks full of antibiotics and everything right. else it's like yeah a little bit of charcoal ain't gonna resolve all the issues with that <laughs> i thought that was quite funny a bit of an oxymoron <laughs> It's got um, some bay leaf or, or something. Mm.
Reminds me of like an Indian burger. Not that I've ever been to an Indian place with burger, but like, yeah. Yeah, it almost tastes like curry. It's creamy. It's super yeah. creamy. Because when they said tempeh burger, I thought it'd just be tempeh, but it's like tempeh with vegetables and spices and loads of different things. I think a vegan diet has to be boring. <laughs> nah, -uh, not at all. <laughs> this is what boring to give. Wow, it's good that they're not using like just garbage white bread. Right. Like, <laughs> it is good bread. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to be super careful about bread. Bread, bad bread can really mess me up. <laughs> sure. Yeah, full on white refined flour, like. Man, this is good. Yeah, I'm kind of blown away right now. Mm. <laughs> it's so creamy, the patty is like. Mm. Creamy with a slight crunch because mm -hmm. of the veggies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't taste like massively oily either. I think it's just a bit oily on the outside. Yeah, like Chiang Mai has a lot more vegan restaurants, but I don't even normally go to one because I thought the food was not good at most of them. But here, there's like so many. It's ridiculous. And now since I got back, I found out about loads of new ones. That, well, loads that I haven't been to, so I'm going to try to every day go to a new one because of these types of vegan. Have you been here before? No. My friends mentioned it the other day. Yeah, and there's um, the two Ecos. There's one in Phong Sala called Eco Run Tree. And they do like, um, um, they do vegan waffles and I think vegan pancakes with vegan ice cream and all this other stuff on it. Like, <laughs> oh my, um, that'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> really good. Mm. 
Yeah, just the texture of it is... It's like cheesy almost. Mm. It's creamy. Cauliflower, I think. Cauliflower. Oh, me. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. Pumpkin, I think that one. Mm -hmm. Carrot or sweet potato. Yeah, pretty good actually. Mm. Very nice tomato base, nice mixture of vegetables. No vegan cheese, but that's fine. Mm. Yeah. Noisy, noisy animals. <laughs> you got dinner and a show. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, Gama, yeah. Do you know Gama? No. They do really good vegan burgers. This one, this one. Let's do amazing, like, gluten free apple and walnut cake. And it's like, it's my, one of my favourite cakes on the island. Definitely the best vegan pizza I've had in Thailand. So, yeah, a lot of time when you get them, like, they don't put much vegetables on, and it's normally like a rock hard white base. It's just not good at all. This base is like relatively soft. Mmm. And the animals finally wet. That was the mom. Mm. Burger. <laughs> the burger blew my mind. Mm. Honestly. That's so, so good. Yeah. I think I might order another one. <laughs> Cup. Huh? One more burger. A uh, burger again. Yeah, same, same. One. Yeah. Yeah, so what we talked about earlier. Yeah, how many calories did you start eating roughly when you started and how many do you roughly eat now? Um, when I began, I, I pretty much based everything I did on Dr. Noon Amon Ra's regimen and he recommends anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 calories. And at first I was like punching it all in, you know, doing the math and, and I found that I couldn't really satisfy myself even at the 1,500 calorie limit. So I was oftentimes getting over in like 2,500 calories, 3,000 calories. Um, and I was telling Danny earlier that I, I've gone through waves and it, it really changes from night to night. Sometimes I won't even eat a thousand calories. Sometimes I'm like, I'll go on a total bender and eat like 5,000 calories. But it, Danny was saying it, it kind of comes and goes with yeah. you know how much I've been training, um, how much sleep I'm getting, the mood. I mean, there's a lot of factors yeah, that come into play. So. And at, at the end of the day, I just kind of, I don't really trip on it. It's, you know, I eat, I eat once a day and sometimes I, I, I overeat and I, or I feel like I, oh, you know, I, I eat too much, why'd I do that? But I wake up in the morning and it's it's fine and then yeah. I'm, I'm hungry again yeah. the next night, so. It's, yeah, especially once you get moving in the morning and that, right. like, wakes you up, you're fine, like. You and know. and you, you're not, as long as you don't, you know, wake up and stuff it down with more food, it's re it's really yeah. ends up not being a problem. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I found. I don't worry about it too much. Oh. 
Someone left a comment recently, someone that watches my videos a lot said, I can't do one meal a day because I need to eat 4,000 calories. No, you don't. I may eat up to that right. quite a few times, but you don't necessarily need to. Find the amount of calories that works for you. Like I said, it's going to be different from day in to day out due to many different factors. So try it out. See how much that you need. And just eat until you feel completely full and satiated. Right. Because a lot of people think that I may ever eat, and sometimes I do. But every time I always feel full, and I know when I'm over it because I feel massively tired afterwards. Right. Like if you feel really, really tired afterwards, you've ate too much, or you've had <laughs> like really oily food, because yeah. that slows you down. If you can't walk afterwards, you've, you've gone yeah. over the limit. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, to be worried about not being able to eat enough is it's quite silly because the human body doesn't really require that much food to to exist or to live to to, to sustain um, life at all. You can um, you can go very extended periods amount of time um, without having you know any food really. Yeah. And so to worry about that kind of seems arbitrary or unnecessary. Yeah. So. You gonna get the cake? Yeah, well I can't decide if I want to get that passion fruit pie or the vegan chocolate. Or both. Yeah, and as you can see, we've both got very muscular bodies. We're not like bodybuilders because we don't do bodybuilding. Otherwise, we have, um, yeah, otherwise we have bodybuilders' bodies. But yeah, just eating one meal a day helps you keep really low body fat percentage. It's it's like, so easy. Like I don't, I really don't even train that hard for period, periods of time, and I maintain my muscle. And and urine therapy helps a lot with that too. I practice urine therapy um, daily and. That really helps me keep muscle on. Um, yeah. But yeah, so because of the hormone boost that you get from fasting, it's like, yeah, absolutely phenomenal. It's like a cheat code to yeah. life. Yeah, it's literally. <laughs> it's a whole cheat code. <laughs> Sauces like strawberry sauce or anything, I like that. Maybe. But also cake. Here's a place that does uh, vegan milkshakes, like vegan ice cream and stuff like that as well. I've been there recently. That was I've good. seen it, I've seen quite a bit of that around mm. vegan homemade ice cream. And yeah, this is from yesterday's mukbang. This burrito, the half of it. And actually, after this, after this meal, I won't be eating food for about 72 hours. Yeah. Every month I do like a three day Ah, fast. nice. How come mm -hmm. you do that then? Um, I do it based on the moon, actually. When full the moon's about to isn't it? Yeah, I don't do it on a full moon. I always do it um, when the moon enters my sun sign. Ah, no. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird time. If you ever pay attention. Um, What's your sun sign? Libra. Libra. <laughs> What's yours? Sagittarius. Yeah, mm -hmm. Um. But I find that when the moon is in my sun sign, it's like um, something is like lined up. Like my inner and outer worlds just feel super lined up and my body kind of goes into a natural um, healing 
or detox or whatever you want to call it. No, I, and so I always just go with it and just kind yeah. of fast it because I, I find I'm like not usually very hungry yeah. during that time anyway. Nice. So I just kind of go That's with it. That's a real good observation. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Check it out sometime. Yeah, I remember that because I'm, like, I'm really into astrology but I've never thought of it in relation to that. So yeah, definitely do some research into that. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in astrology. I absolutely love it. It's really good to understand people. Like, yeah, and people aren't aware, like, certain, like, when certain planets are in orbit and doing certain things, and the moon, it has an effect on us, whether you're aware of it or not, so. Do you know your, um, moon sign? No, my phone does, though. <laughs> my phone does. That's a, that's a fun thing to know about people, more so than the sun sign, because the moon is like the the internal, you know, mm -hmm. the emotions and needs and things like that. Yeah. yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. Recently I've gotten into um, Chiron, the asteroid Chiron. Okay. It's like uh, the wounded healer, they call it. Okay, yeah, I haven't heard of that one. It's like um, your biggest wound that you have as a person. Like your biggest, like your biggest fears, ultimately. But it's it's weird because it also represents what you are really good at um, and healing others with. Oh like, wow! Yeah, that'd be it's, really it's re good to look into. Yeah, it. it's really. You have to show me some information on that. Yeah. Wow. Um, my Chiron, for example, is in Scorpio. Yeah. And so, I think it's like the most intense placement for Chiron. Where Scorpio is like full on like <laughs> right and it's it's so like i have all these fears about like losing things and and death and uh. and um transitional periods in my lifetime can can get really weird for me and but um i've always had this innate ability to really be comforting to people that like lose the lose a pet or lose a family member or lose something in general like I almost don't even need to say anything like just my presence yes. can like really help people yeah. like that no but, it's really good to hear yeah but for me it's like the you know I, I have this like fear of, of losing things sometimes that and it's good to know your greatest fear because that's really your your greatest friend yeah um, if you can work on the thing that gives you the most trouble you're, you're gonna make the most progress yeah your way. biggest fears can be your biggest strengths what you need to do is face them head on, going to the eye of the storm, and it's going to allow you to become the best version of yourself. Like, yeah, it's right. definitely a very, very positive, beneficial thing. A lot of people don't see their fears as something that's beneficial to them because they don't see them as something they can grow from. Because most people are scared of their fears and aren't aware that you can benefit from them. So, yeah. Um, so, I got another burger. What did you get? We got some cake, got the chocolate cake, got the uh, passion fruit pie. Nice. That's no, good. Going for it. And I got some food from yesterday, so I'm going to add the quinoa from that to the burger because I feel drawn to do so. And they offer a quinoa burger, so I'll make my own. Oh my. Most of the quinoa's falling out, but it's all good. <laughs> That's the bomb. Hmm? So what's that taste like? Is it for passion fruit? Kind of like cheesecake, very creamy. Milky. Sour though, because of the passion fruit. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah, I think I'll be ordering the pancakes. I'm still thinking about it. I just bit my spoon. <laughs> that is pretty cool with the cherry on top. <laughs> I'm gonna get the menu because I want some other things. Just gonna have to go. We're probably the people that have ordered the most food here ever. 
Um, yeah, we're, we're anomalies. Everybody's yeah. looking at us. Yeah, that always seems to happen. <laughs> <laughs> New restaurants when I go to. Yeah, Lots like, of them when they come here. out. <laughs> They take they take the order to the chef. And they come out and they ask you like, is, is this all the food that you want? Yeah. You, you've not made a mistake. I'm like, no. <laughs> then when we must eat, or when they look at people like us, they must be like, how do they do that? They're not fat. <laughs> Another thing is that if you go out to eat with people that don't eat one meal a day. They're all finished in like 15, 20 minutes and you're still going, mm -hmm. you know, an hour later. Yeah. It just kind of doesn't work. Kind of dry, but mm -hmm. the flavor is, is super good. You don't you don't like chocolate things too much, do you? Well, apparently I don't. But most videos, I keep buying chocolate stuff, and then my friends, will, like I say it's horrible, and then my friends are like, "What are you doing?" Well, I just want to make it more entertaining for you, though. And then it's all good for my friends because they end up getting it anyway, like afterwards, because I don't want to eat it. You'll have to hang around you more and get your, you your chocolate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I don't mind chocolatey stuff if it's got like a lot of sugar or sweetness added to it. Not when it's like cacao, like just pure. Chocolate, like, like well, dark chocolate, yeah. 90% dark chocolate, yeah. you're out. Oh. When I got into the whole raw vegan stuff and superfoods and everything, yeah, I was into cacao, but not anymore. Mm. Have you ever had raw cacao? Mm. Yeah, I used to. Super intense, man. Mm. Holy crap. He used to make smoothies and add like two tablespoons of raw cacao powder to it. And then I got go out with friends so we'd be drinking and stuff and I would just have cacao. <laughs> <laughs> right. How do they do oats? No way. Oh, they do peanut butter and Nutella toasties. Wow. Mm. I wonder if they could do <gasps> peanut butter and banana pancakes. Uh oh. Oh, that sounds like a good combination. That's not on the menu, but let's see if they can make that. I think they can pull it off. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Uh, Swati cup. Uh, Swati cup. You can make pancakes yeah. with peanut butter and banana. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. And banana. Could you do it like you see here? On top. Yeah, peanut butter and banana. Yeah, okay, we keep menu. Yes, so they can make us a custom order of pancakes with peanut butter and banana. They do fried banana, that's not good. That's, yeah, sitting on <laughs> Yeah, for being a non-vegan place, this has got a lot of vegan options. This is really good. And high quality vegan options. Yeah, really good prices here as well. Quite a few places to go to, dishes are like 200 to 220. Like you can get dishes as low as like, what, 70 baht for like, pad tires, pretty cheap. <laughs> Save you a sliver of chocolate and uh, satisfy your uh, yeah, chocolate curiosity. Mmm! Pretty good. It's a bit dry, you said, but. Mmm! That's a good chocolate cake, I actually like that one. Mmm! 
Definitely some ice cream though. That would help with the dryness. Yeah. 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 Yeah
and like the effects, like the endorphin rush is like so much more <laughs> oh, profound. Shit, yeah. Like I highly recommend it. I, I gotta try that. Yeah, you can come with me this week or something yeah. and we go and try it. It's, it's very profound, like yeah, really amazing. And yeah, the more you do that on a regular basis, the more your body will release even more endorphins and last longer and stuff, so yeah. Mm. Body hacking again. Mm. <laughs> In many different ways. Got a few tricks up our sleeve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just tapping into these amazing natural things in the body. Right. You've done the Wim Hof breathing method? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a Wim Hof event every Saturday with the ice bars. I think it's on tomorrow as well. I'll, I'll give you the details. Yeah, That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've never done it with other people. But. Yeah, someone that's literally been trained by Wim Hof and is really good friends with Wim Hof and he teaches all other different things as well. But, mm. So, yeah, my friends have been really telling me about it and saying it's really good, so. Yeah. Wim Hof method is freaking awesome. Mm. I've had some fun experiences doing that. Yeah. And and it's what I find really uncanny about it is the the DMT release in your brain because I've smoked DMT and I've done Wim Hof and it's the yeah, same. Understand. It's literally the same thing. <laughs> so no. it's yeah. it's amazing that you can just have a you know a, a psychoactive <laughs> out of body experience by just breathing yeah. in a really simple way, mm -hmm. just oxygenating your yeah. body. Yeah, exactly. If you don't know about the Wim Hof method, search it up. Some people know Wim Hof as the Ice Man. Teaches you specific breath work, a lot of time combined with like ice, cold water therapy or ice baths. Has profound healing benefits mentally and physically. Like, yeah, it just makes you feel so alive. Yeah, wake up in the morning, do that, you feel really energized. Get in a cold shower for three minutes, makes no adrenaline levels go through the roof. Being in a shower, cold shower for at least three minutes, is showing through science. Like, yeah, one meal day, Wim Hof method, like doing shower, cold shower every morning, three minutes. That alone is what energized. You ain't gonna eat coffee anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I typically drink quite a bit of coffee, but since I've been in this climate, I think, I like don't need it. Like ah, okay. the hot weather's for some reason keeps everything moving. Because I kind of use it as a tool to, um, um, well in Ayurveda, I'm, my type, my, my dosha is a kapha. Mm -hmm. So kind of slow and, and water and earth, so kind of muddy. So coffee can kind of help move things along uh, for me. But yeah. here, I'm like, I don't even yeah. want it really. No, 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 I can imagine. Yeah. But I, I just came from New York where it was like snowing almost every day. Oh, wow. You know, yeah, totally different environment. Yeah, so I'm like mind. going crazy with the coffee because, yeah. Yeah, yeah Ori Hoffmaker talks a lot about coffee, the one that writes the one, the one meal a day warrior diet. Mm -hmm. so, um, and yeah, if you do it in the right way, you have the right coffee and the right dosage at the right time, right. it has like a whole host of benefits, like neuroprotective benefits, like, it, like so many different things. Like, yeah. Um, Dr. Noon Amon Ra drinks quite a bit of coffee. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah, and it, he mentions that um, there's some sort of phase two enzyme within coffee, um, some sort of, of nutrient within coffee that um, allows your liver to release an, another enzyme that actually um, allows you to detox at a faster rate. So, yeah, and there's, I think there's other like anti-aging benefits to coffee that Yeah, like so many benefits. benefits. I can't remember them all, but yeah, um, Ori Hoffman could have talked about it a lot. But it, and he says to combine, like, have one in the morning, like no more than a two ounce espresso in the morning and one before training. Yeah. He says if you start to have, I don't know if it's 50 or 100 milligrams of coffee per two ounce of most standard coffees, but he says once you start to have more than that, then the body starts to have negative effects. And you also want to make sure that it's fresh beans that are unground right. and like the highest quality beans possible because they're, they're sprayed to crap like so much with pesticides. So that's where a lot of people get negative effects with coffee. They're drinking too much, it's full of pesticides and you shouldn't be having it alongside food from what I learned from all yeah. Mecca. So there's a way to do it right and not. So. Yeah, and I, I've never been a coffee drinker, but I experimented last year, I think that was two or three times, and I was doing 
high intensity interval training on a spin bike. And I tested it without coffee, with coffee, and then without coffee with drum and bass music. <laughs> and the compa I noticed that my power went up by about 20% and my heart rate went up a lot as well and I burnt about 20% more calories with the coffee. Then I tried it with drum and bass and I got the same results with drum and bass as with coffee, but I haven't tried them both together, so yeah, it's a pretty That'd be the thing to do, yeah. 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 The bike might actually start moving. The spin bike, if I had drum and bass and coffee. I haven't done a, I haven't done an experiment quite like that. But I do notice when I drink coffee, I totally have a, an edge when it comes to um, training. Yeah, like whether it's um, aerobic training or strength training, I'm, I definitely have an edge. And you know, Olympic athletes, they can't have any caffeine in their bloodstream. Really? So, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of right there is proof for me that it gives you a competitive wow. advantage. No way. And that is like the rules, they're not allowed to. Right, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow, that's really interesting. I wonder if that Garana, well, Garana's got coffee, it's a source of caffeine as well. Garana's actually stronger than coffee. I've never, I've never tried Yeah, Garana's about 20 times stronger than coffee. So it's, <laughs> it's, uh -oh. it's like taking drugs, like literally, I've tried it before. That with cacao, like, <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. But, yeah, yeah. Coffee can definitely be good if done done correctly, for sure. And yeah, people that get negative effects from it. Some people have a specific genetic defect where they cannot process it. So that's why some people get a, a negative effect. You can get tested for that through 23andMe to find out. So some people can't. But yeah, people that haven't, then you shouldn't have any issues with it unless, as long as you follow the guidelines that I've mentioned. So the pancakes have arrived, the peanut butter on top, I think the bananas are inside, we're not going to start eating that yet because it's really hot. But yeah, what was you saying about, uh, yeah, you speaking to someone about one meal a day? Yeah, we were talking about, um, I just mentioned to a friend the other night about eating one meal a day and she was hesitant to even try it because she said in the past that if she went periods of time without eating, she would start to feel kind of uh, freaked out, even um, kind of lightheaded and, and nervous and feeling like she needs to eat some food to slow down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't really know what to recommend to her other than to just kind of stick it out. Um, what, I, what I think is happening is it's just a change in blood sugar. Yeah. And it's something that if, it's not going to hurt you. I really don't think so. No, not at all. Definitely yeah. not. Like. Yeah, and what it is, a lot of people are so used to eating constant food right. that their body's so adapted to getting the fuel from their food that their body's not so efficient at burning its own body fat as fuel. So normally people right. cannot feel so good. Some people will be fine, some people won't, but around a two week period you might not feel so good, but after a two week period you become more fat adapted. So it definitely becomes easier at time. Like I was saying, maybe she isn't drinking a lot of water, maybe she's not eating enough calories the day before. There could, there could be many different reasons yeah. for it. Um, I, I mentioned to her also the, the hormone ghrelin. Yes. Um, yeah. Basically, when you give your body food um, on a schedule, like you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it will start to expect breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and yeah. it will release hormones um, in yeah. order to help you digest the food. Yeah. And then That's so, yeah. then, you know, you go a day without food and it, the body's thinking it's going to get food at a certain time, and so it starts releasing the hormones and you start feeling hungry, like, oh, okay, it's time to yeah. eat. Yeah. But if you just push through that, it goes away. Yeah. And then you feel really good. Yeah. You feel like no. on top of the world. Exactly, yeah. It's used to those natural, those rhythms of eating. So when you start to feel like what people say, hunger pains and that noise, that grumbling noise, that is ghrelin being released within your digestive system. And it's actually a good thing because it's producing new neurons in your brain. The reason why it's doing that is because it wants you to go and find food. Right. So yeah, it's not a bad thing at all. It's actually a really, really good thing. And, and it's super easy to reprogram, especially I found a good oh, wow. tip is to use good that is good <laughs> oh man um, but um, a, a good tip that I have is to use the Sun um, because your body whether you know it or not is is in a general rhythm with the Sun and the moon and, and all the other stuff but if you can eat your meal at the same time every day based on when the sun, like for example, I like to eat when the sun goes down. That's mm -hmm. generally like my, okay, okay. time to eat. Um, your body will really get into a nice rhythm and the hormones and everything will just line up the same way every day and it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Um, so that's a good tip for, for one meal a day. Yeah, for sure. Mm. 
this pancake. I thought the Uzzah can put pancakes on top. They've actually cooked the pancakes through. I mean, the bananas banana. through the pancake. That's the best. Oh, you want to try it? Yeah. Wow. That's again another texture like thing going on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. And the peanut butter combined. Mm -hmm. I think I could eat another one after this, not even at the end of it, but... Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. It's like a donut. Mm. It really is. Yeah, it's like a really, really thick doughy. Super doughy. Or back when it donut thing, because you just said donut, but hang hang up there. Mm. Mm, yeah, that's the bomb. I'd probably get chocolate on it, but... Mm. <laughs> hey, look at the moon. Whoa. Nice, very bright. I think it's... Yeah, it just went into Libra. Mm. Nice. A few hours ago. Wow. <laughs> Definitely craving ice cream though, for sure. I'm an ice cream junkie. Yeah, and combine him, train him while fast him. Malt guys will do a thing as well. Right. I can't imagine training not in a fast state. No. Like how, I used to do it too. You know, I would go, I would go like eat like three cheeseburgers and then go to the gym and lift weights afterwards. I'm, I think now like how did I even do that? Like how was that even possible? Yeah, it's like you just push through it sort of thing and you're just used to it. It's like, yeah. I'm trying to go back to that now. No, oh, no, I'd be so screwed. I'd have to take a nap mm. if I ate that. Yeah, I remember when I used to do long distance cycling, what I got taught by certain people is you need to eat carbs right. every hour. And they have the little gel packets mm. all the time. So I take those things with me. All right. Even for me now, I've reached a point where it's even like water is like, why would I, why would I drink water while or, or before I, I, I train? Even water kind of slows me down. I um, interesting. I really prefer to be in a dry fasted state for most of my day. Nice. Um, besides urine therapy, that's that's generally all I consume all day. Yeah, I found that. I was doing mostly dry fasting until probably like the last three weeks. I don't know why, but my water intake's gone up massively. But actually, since I changed my training more, because my training is like absolutely insane for yeah. like an hour, like it's like um, like maximum intensity for every exercise where I can barely finish every exercise yeah. for like an hour or so. You so. do quite a bit of like circuit mm -hmm. stuff too. You like yeah. hop from one to the yeah. other, not much breaks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Try and rest as short as possible. Right. So yeah. I found that in a place where it doesn't have aircon, like I sweat so much that it's just like, yeah, I need to like try and cool myself down a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you get your protein from? <laughs> You're not eating animal, loads of animal food. Whatever I eat. It, protein is, is such a... We don't need that much. And even to build muscle, you don't, you don't really need that much protein at all. Um, maybe 0.8 to 1.5 um, grams of protein per um, kilogram of body weight is about all you need. Um, and for me, my general diet, that's, I get plenty of it, so yeah. I don't really do too much protein powder or, or anything like that. And because building muscle has got so much more to do with hormones. That's what I'm telling people all the time. It's like, that's the key right yeah. there. And yeah, so what happens when bodybuilders start taking steroids and stuff to boost testosterone? They blow up like a balloon, right? Like, that's not the shoes their diet at all. Right. Yeah, hormone reduction like all of the way. 
And that's what I'm trying to do as many different things as I can to boost human growth hormone and testosterone. Right. Headstands, you getting the headstands yet? No. That like super boosts human growth. Yeah? Yeah, it does. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've, I've heard it and I've, I've really experienced it. Doing doing headstands before and after I train. I'm not sure which one would How be. How long would you do them for? Minutes at a time. Yeah. Really as long as I, as wow. I feel like it. So is it because you're upside down? So is it kind of... There's, yeah. there's something about the legs and human growth hormone because if you do um, a leg work like heavy squats or, yeah, or, or dead, deadlifts. deadlifts, right, it really boosts that hormone. And so there's something about the legs and, and sprints really boost human growth human human growth hormone and so if you, if you do a headstand you invert yourself it kind of I don't know what what really goes on wow why that happens but I, I feel it I feel definitely more charged right. and the way that it gets your blood flowing mm -hmm. too is it's like um, it's replicating what an inversion table does I right. used to do them all the time back in the kit where they have one way yeah that upside down allows like I can't remember which way it's round, but it allows like old blood to circulate into different areas and put new blood into other areas, which gives you a whole host of benefits. So, yeah, and it's really good for the lymphatic system as well. For yeah. Hi. Hi. And it flips your perspective on life. It totally does. If you do headstands outside, you start to look at things. The trees look so weird upside down. Yeah. And people, I, really I get weird. a bit freaked out when I'm upside down. I feel like I'm going to fall off the edge of the earth, or the earth is going to fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to float away. Like it, it's yeah, it's weird, and it, so it changes your perspective on on the way you look at things. Everything's a lot weirder than we get used to to you know yeah. right side up. Yeah. Look yeah. around, it's like whoa, this, yeah. this place is really weird actually. <laughs> See, I think we're done, even though I feel like I could eat more food, but maybe I will if I do. I'll put the camera back on. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed our interaction together with my lovely new friend that mm -hmm. uh, knows me through YouTube, which is good. And yeah, I'm sure we'll be, he'll be doing some more videos with me as well. We can do training together and lots of other things. So yeah, okay, it's a really cool guy. So yeah, it's good fun. So yeah, if you have any questions for either of us, I'll, I'll tell him if there's any questions for him and he can reply to you if he wants to put them down below. You can find me on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. My name is Daniel Drury. My last okay. name is yeah, D-R-U-R-Y. So we put the links down below for his Instagram and his YouTube. Definitely go and check out his channel. I'm sure he's got loads of good information to share with you as well, just like I have. So yeah, that's cool. And if you like the video, like it down below, share with others, and subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis make sure you click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button otherwise youtube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded so as always stay fit stay energetic and go and get those games peace <laughs>